Hi, this is Patricia McClure, and I put together this PowerPoint uh, presentation to illustrate my abbreviated dissertation research proposal to identify and disrupt colorblind ideology in racially isolated white secondary social studies classrooms. The background of the study is actually grounded to the time that I was a middle school history teacher in Texas. Uh, Back then, I developed a pretty good idea as to why history was taught based on the content standards and the state standardized test questions. Basically, history is developed as a collection of stories on how white Europeans came to power on this continent. It's used to describe race as a social and historical concept, and it is designed to colonize, racialize, and oppress non-European cultures, and all of this in order to reinforce white privilege. Included in the background uh, information of this study is racial literacy goals, which will hopefully be used to frame an intervention. Um, these goals include developing a set of social proficiencies to help understand all forms of racism, to gain understanding about how racism permeates through our culture and our society, and also develop awareness of how and why racism is embedded in history curricula and the education system. The problem this uh, study will look at is the fact that white students are among the most racially isolated groups in the country. This isolation contributes to the lack of racial and racist knowledge among white students, and then they often develop white or colorblind ideology, which is a form of racism that ignores and denies racism. Although this ideology is nurtured and developed in the social studies classroom too. Looking a little bit deeper into the colorblind racism, uh, the study will take a look at how it ignores racial differences and supports white privilege. And this white privilege also is, contributes to the development of the whiteness in our society how it creates the false assumptions that all racialized groups have the same opportunities as whites, and how it also weakens the racial resiliency in white people that creates the condition known as white fragility. The purpose of this study is to analyze how educators in racially isolated white secondary classrooms identify the colorblind ideologies that are often find, found in the social studies curricula and in instructional strategies. A secondary purpose is to explore how the instructional strategies have the potential to disrupt colorblind ideologies and to strengthen racial literacy in white students. The ultimate goal is to develop an educational intervention from the findings that encourage white students to engage in social justice that actively disrupts racism. The significance of this study is to help secondary social studies teachers identify colorblind and other racist ideologies in the curricula and in instructional practices, and also to help them develop an awareness of the underdevelopment of racial acuity among white students due to privilege and isolation. Another significance to the study is the validation of the use of critical race theory and in critical white theory as methods to challenge and disrupt racism. This study will take a look at uh, components of, of social justice, uh, of detecting practices of racial literacy, and then also identifying pedagogical practices that help normalize conversations about race, challenges assumptions about race, and, expo and exposes the colorblind myth. The overarching research question is how, if at all, do secondary teachers identify colorblind ideology found in standardized social studies curricula and teaching strategies in racially isolated white classrooms? The other three research questions has to do with how teachers determine what they feel are racially literate curricula and strategies and how they employ it in their classroom then how these uh, strategies impact the students, what are their reactions to this, and then finally, can we identify any type of practices that motivate or have the potential to motivate racially isolated uh, students to want to engage in social justice. 
critical race theory frames this uh, research. It will provide the strength in the organization by placing race at the center on why social studies curricula is taught. The components that will be used um, in this framework will be taking a look at the pedagogical practices, particularly uh, the anti-racial and the multicultural curricula that's used, but is often uh, lacks emotional context that is needed for students to engage in social justice. We'll take a look at the social study curricula overall about how it reinforces white privilege by racializing non-Europeans. And then also the segregation of schools, really that's due to how our schools are funded. The critical white theory will help structure potential educational interventions by revealing how social studies curricula produces and supports white supremacy and privilege. We'll take a look at the, uh, the colorblind frame, the ideology behind it. We will also look at the components of white fragility and what that looks like. And then finally, we will take a look at the whole concept of whiteness in society and how it's uh, socially and politically constructed and really has pretty much very little to do with skin color. The research method that will be used is uh, the educational design research, the, and it will be the analysis and exploration phases of, the, of this type of research. I selected this research because it helps determine educational interventions. The two components of this research will be analysis and exploration. The analysis, the initial orientation is the proposed um, research, well, the research proposal, and then also the literature review, and then any kind of field-based investigations that has to do with uh, reviewing the curricula, interviewing teachers, possibly doing polls. The exploration includes site visits, observing the classrooms, attending professional meetings of experts in the field of critical race theory and critical white theory, and then also any type of networking. So why am I using this method? Again, it is because it will help inform the development of colorblind ideology and how to disrupt it. It will, uh, using this type of research will increase the success of sustainable interventions. It will provide all the needed components to help frame an intervention. Uh, it will also allow for the cognitive maps to develop in identifying racially literate patterns to disrupt the development of colorblind ideology. It will also help frame how people make sense of any type of social phenomenon, but in this case it would be the colorblind ideology and racism. And it will also help target motivation or rationale for engaging in action. And hopefully it will also introduce new ways of looking at this problem along with some potentially new solutions to the problem. Thank you so much for listening to me uh, tonight um, and talk soon. Bye.